Chapter Eight of Our Little Australian Cousin. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Our Little Australian Cousin by Mary F. Nixon Rowley. Chapter Eight. In the Bush. The sun was high in the heavens when Jean awoke, and at first she did not know where she was. Then she sat and looked about her, calling, Kadok, but there was no answer. She went to the door of the hut and looked about. The fire was still burning, but there was no sign of the black boy. Before she had time to be frightened, however, Kadok's black face peered from between the trees, across the little clearing which lay in front of the hut. He smiled when he caught sight of her. Little Mrs. Sleep Good, feel good this morning, he said. Boojeri, Kadok make breakfast. Footnote expression of satisfaction and footnote what have you for breakfast she asked hungry as she had never been at home a fine fruit got it top of tree he said handing her a large purple plum-like fruit which she ate and thought delicious kadok then roasted in the ashes some scrub turkey eggs he had found and these too tasted good and there was damper and cool water missa must hurry start now said kadok we long way to go today to get to mother. First I must try to fix my hair, she said. It catches in the branches so that it hurts. Kadok help, he said briefly. He caught the golden mass in his hand and screwed it up in bunches on either side of her head, pinning it tight with some long thorns. Then he tied about her head a bright handkerchief which he had worn knotted around the open neck of his shirt, and rolling up the blankets and packing up the ration bag, he shouldered his swag gave her a hand, and they were off for the day. As they walked, Jean noticed that Kadok always looked to the right and left, and that whenever they came near a hill or a hummock, he would go ahead before telling her to follow him. "'Why do you always look around, Kadok?' she asked curiously. "'Afraid devil devil get little Missa or Booba or maybe Yowi or Yowi,' he answered briefly. "'Who are they?' she asked. Debel, debel, bad god, enemy of Bayame, he said. Footnote. Bayame is the chief god of the blacks. End footnote. Mbuba big kangaroo, very bad father of kangaroos. Yowi is fever god and Yawi is snake god. All very bad for little Missa. And he shook his black head. He did not tell her that there were others more to be feared than these monsters of the blacks' demonology but he was worried by tracks he saw in the sand, tracks of both blacks and whites. Mounted police, been here, he muttered to himself. Look for little Missa. See horses' tracks plain. Hear black man's tracks. Think bad blacks. And he knit his brows. Paddock was at a loss to know what to do. He did not want to take Jean into the bush again, fearing that hard walking such as they had had the day before would make her too sick to go on. Yet he was afraid to keep on the beaten track. They kept on till noon, however, and he drew her aside into the woods to rest and eat her dinner. He gave her damper, of which she began to be tired, bits of smoked meat and some of the big larvae to be found in quantities on the tree roots, and which she thought delicious. She was hungry, but Kadok gave her some roots to chew as they walked, saying, We eat again before long, must walk some now, afraid we have big storm and he looked anxiously at the sky over which heavy clouds were passing. Obediently she followed him again, and he walked quickly, peering through the bushes as if looking for something. The wind was so fierce that they made slow progress. It blew so that Jean was terribly frightened, and at last Kadok stopped in his quick walk and took her hand. "'Miss afraid storm devil,' he said. "'I find place to hide from him. Come!' And he pulled her into the bushes which covered a high hill. Skirting round the hill, he pushed through a thicket which seemed almost like a wall, dragging Jean along as the storm broke with a sudden crash of thunder which frightened the child terribly. Quick! Kadok cried to her. We find cave now! And he pushed aside some close growing tree branches and showed her the entrance of a little cave hollowed out of the rock. Here we be safe till storm go over, he said, and Jean gladly crouched in the shelter, watching with frightened eyes the play of the lightning. Kadok gave her more roots to chew and talked kindly to her to soothe her fears. 
This not much storm, he said. See many worse than this. Soon over, and we go on. Think Missa see mother tomorrow. Not many hours far now. Kadok, said Jean, why are you so good to me? What do you mean? asked Kadok. Why do you take me home? she asked. Black boy not forget friend, he said. Not forget enemy. Do you mean to Kadok? Kadok do mean to you. If he has to wait five, ten years. Do Kadok good, he do good to you, when he make chance. But I never did you any good, said Jean, puzzled. No, little Missa not. Missa MacDonald do me heap good. Footnote. This story of the poisoning of nearly a whole tribe of blacks at a Christmas feast is vouched for on good authority. End of footnote. There was bad man at station. He no like blacks near his little camp. Blacks not bad, not hurt white man. White man very bad. He make feast and tell blacks to eat. Black men all eat. Next day all black men dead. All but Kadok and his father, great chief. They very sick, but they not had eaten much of white man's pudding. Chief told Miss MacDonald they very sick here, putting his hand on his stomach. She look very sorry and give them hot drink. It make them very sick, and all white man's pudding come up. Think very strange that Kadok and chief only ones not die, but like Miss MacDonald very well for hot drink. Chief father say to me, some day do kind to Missa MacDonald, and I say, yes. When little Missa taken by bad blacks, chief say to me, now time to pay Missa MacDonald, take little Missa home. I go take, and the boy nodded his head. Jean did not understand all of this story, but she could take in enough to know that her Aunt Mildred had saved the life of Kadok and his father, and she felt that the boy would do all he could for her. The storm had ceased, and the rain lay in sparkling drops upon bush and leaf. Very wet, said Kadok as he peered out. Missa sit here very still while Kadok go and see. Maybe we go on, maybe not. Jean did not want to stay alone in the cave. Let me go with you, she said pleadingly. But Kadok shook his head. Not good for Missa. Big snakes come out of holes, too many. Kadok not go far away. Missa not come out of cave till Kadok come back. Miss Afraid, say prayers to white people's Bayame. Jean thought his advice good and said her prayers, sitting quietly for a time looking through the cave door. Though she could see but little, the screen of vines and bushes was so thick. She grew tired of sitting still and moved about the little cave, finding little to interest her, however. It was hollowed out like a tunnel deep into the cliff, but was so dark except right at the mouth that she was afraid to explore it. She took off her shoes, washed her aching feet, and reached to the bushes around the cave, pulled the leaves to bind on them as Kadok had taught her to do. Then she took off the handkerchief he had tied around her head, let down her long hair, and tried to smooth out the tangles with her fingers. It was no easy task, for the hair was long, fine, and curly, and it was terribly matted down and snarled. She took a long thorn and tried to use it for a comb, and after working a long time had the lock smoothed out into a fluffy mass of gold on either side her face. She had been so interested in her work that she had not noticed how late it was getting until suddenly it seemed to be growing dark. She looked out of the cave and saw the gleams of the golden sunset through the leaves. She felt hungry. Where can Kadok be? she thought to herself. He has been gone a long, long time. Oh, supposing something has happened to him, what shall I do? But there was nothing for her to do but wait, and she sat at the door of the cave, too frightened to cry, fearing a thousand dangers, the worst because they were imaginary. Then she heard a crackling of the branches near the cave and sprang to her feet joyfully, expecting to see Kadok's black face through the bushes. Kadok! she cried eagerly. The leaves parted and a black face peered through the bushes. Fierce black eyes gazed at the child as she stood, speechless with astonishment, gazing at a perfectly strange black. She did not speak. She was too frightened to scream, and the black, too, was silent. With her floating golden hair, her wide blue eyes, her fair cheek turned to gold by the rays of the setting sun, which shone full upon her, the rest of her body concealed by the branches with which Kadok had filled the mouth of the cave, she looked like a creature of air rather than earth. And so the black thought her. 
With a wild cry of, Curra! Curra! He let go his hold of the branches, and Jean could hear him crashing through the bushes in mad haste to get away. Footnote. Curra Curra is the dewdropper or mist-gatherer, goddess of the blacks and wife of Munuala, the water god. End of footnote. End of chapter 8.